guys all right so i'm going to be showing you how to create this beanie from start to finish in real time and uh, the avatar that i'm using here is a genesis 3 female from daz just in case anyone was wondering anyway without further ado let's get started okay so let's get started i'm going to select the rectangular tool and just draw out a pattern like this that's a little bit wider than a head and i'm going to go to my smooth curve hold on my left mouse button to create a curve like this drag it till about over there select my edit pattern select this point hold on shift because that's going to constrain it to this line and just drag this down and what i'm basically doing here is creating like a dot and the purpose for doing this if i go to my images over here of the beanies uh, it's basically this small little detail uh, that you see over here so you see this little line here at the top it just makes the beanie look a little bit more believable okay so once i've done that i'm going to stay on the edit pattern I'm going to select this line right click and go to unfold and then I'm going to select this line right click and go to unfold as well so we've created the basic pattern for our beanie but we are going to have to extend this a little bit down so these little points over here I no longer need them so I'm going to select them delete that delete that and I just want this bottom line I'm going to drag this down hold down shift and just make that a little bit longer and we can always adjust this further once it's on the character if we want to make that a little bit longer as well uh, but this is going to be the basic pattern for our our character now i'm going to make this a little bit shorter as well and a little bit taller i'm going to hold down shift and just drag this in now again, I can make more ju uh, adjustments once it's on the character itself. Uh, but we are creating the, base, uh, the basis of our beanie. So you can see that's a little bit too large within our workspace. So just adjust it accordingly. So this should be fine. And again, we can adjust this once it's on the character's head. Now the first thing I'm going to do before I even simulate this, I'm going to go to my fabric. I'm going to select the default fabric over here. By the way, by default, this shouldn't be red. It should actually be white. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead, select this, and make sure my fabric is on default fabric. And I am going to change that. I'm going to change it to blue. And my preset, I'm going to put this on wool garbadine. I just felt like this works uh, quite well when you're doing beanies, this particular preset. And I'm going to go to my internal polygon line. And I'm going to put a line right down the center over here. So make sure you've got this internal line turned on so you can see where that red line is. Now here's a really neat trick. Uh, if ever you want to fold stuff, like you see, maybe some of you guys don't have access to these arrangement points right if you had an arrangement point you would be able to select this pattern reference one of these lines and it will wrap it around the character's head like that and you'd be able to sew it really easy uh, but if you don't have access to that here's another way to actually fold or uh, fold certain areas of the design so you'll see if i go to fold arrangement and i select this red line i'm going to get this this rotating gizmo and if i basically rotate like this it kind of bends it so it's just a really easy way uh, to create a bend in a particular piece of a garment. So I'm going to select this side as well and rotate it like that. I can select this entire pattern. Make sure that I'm on the select move. Move that forward. Okay, so this is how we go going to sew this beanie. Right? I'm sewing this side onto this side, right? That onto that, this onto this, as you can see over there. Oops, that onto that. Oh, my bad. I actually want to delete that sewing over there. And make sure that you sew in this onto this and this onto this and now we are good to go now you can see it's intersecting it's basically cutting through the head there but 
uh, that shouldn't be an issue just move this a little bit more back and even if it's intersecting with the head here when we simulate it we can always adjust it and just move it a little bit uh, well you'll see once you've got it like this just click spacebar to simulate now a really important thing is I actually want to move this down a little bit more you can see if it's too far up it's going to end up falling off the character's head so bring this down even if it's all the way down to the nose and then click on simulate and uh, that's perfect even though it's intersecting with the character's face like that it's fine because like I said if it's too far up it's going to end up falling off our character now we've created the base for our beanie over here and this could even be a shower cap of some sort uh, now I'm going to select this internal line we created and delete it and now you can see uh, I've got my seam line over here right at the back which is perfect and then these little dot points like I showed you in that image are visible here as well now the reason why we've seen a lot of our character here is the particle distance is still too high so now depending on your PC uh, maybe you need to stay on 20 but I'm gonna put mine all the way on all the way down to 10 right now because it's actually a pretty simple garment that's just placed on the head and you can see immediately it uh, gets rid of the fact that I could see my character underneath okay so we've got the basis of our beanie over here and now we're gonna go ahead and adjust this and make it look a lot better okay okay so for the next part of the beanie we're actually gonna be increasing the length over here and folding this up so we basically going for this type of beanie where it's folded up over here and I just feel like it looks really nice Here's another image which folded up so I want to make sure that I'm increasing the length over here quite a bit actually click on simulate that's fine don't worry too much about that because this is going to be folded up now I want to create another internal line it starts from there so you can see whenever I click on my garment it places a blue dot as a reference point click enter now if I go to fold arrangement I can select this line and fold this up really simple and click on simulate now we've got to be pretty careful over here because this can end up falling off our character so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this line down a little bit more Okay, select that line, fold arrangement, fold that up, and click simulate. Okay, because you, you see if I went too far up, it was going to end up uh, basically folding that up, but then this beanie sometimes falls off the character. And one way to prevent that from happening sometimes uh, is to actually, you could select the entire piece, right click and go to solidify, and then it tries to keep it in that uh, last position and prevent it from moving or we could use uh, pins so we could uh, basically pin or tack uh, the actual beanie onto the avatar so that it doesn't move too much but as long as you didn't place that line too high uh, your beanie shouldn't be falling off your character so from here I can go back to my select move and I can start moving this up Right, and just to see things a little bit easier because this piece is actually going to be separated from our top piece over there I'm going to go ahead select our line that we drew right click and say cut and sew now I'm going to copy this particular I'm going to copy that fabric but I'm going to change this preset to wool it's just a little bit more rigid than the wool gabardine in, in marvelous designer so I'll go ahead select this pattern fabric copy to and I'm actually going to make this a little bit darker just so I can see which ones are actually separated over here and now if I actually go back to thin you're gonna notice that this piece is actually really dark and that's because the normal on here is flipped so to fix this select this pattern right click and say flip normal and it will bring it back Let's see now if I actually change my color over here it's back to normal right so that's really important just go ahead and flip the normal on that part of the beanie as well so now we'll continue from here I'll click on simulate I can adjust this maybe bring it over 
the ears and uh, another thing that you can have trouble with with beanies with characters is the ears sometimes it intersects like this or there can be some simulation issues on the ears and sometimes I'll fix that if I export this out I'll bring it into ZBrush use the move brush and just move it over the ear uh, but we can obviously make this look a lot better and it is going to also look a little bit more realistic if we can get it to sit flush over the ear or maybe you want your beanie to actually be positioned behind the ear like that it's up to you but I, in in this tutorial I am putting this part over the ear so we'll continue from here just do some more adjustments and move this beanie until we're happy with it okay all right so I'm gonna go ahead select this bottom piece and I'm gonna put this on a layer layer one which is gonna put on a layer above this part of the garment and that can sometimes prevent uh, intersection issues but sometimes this can still be stubborn and some of the the piece of this garment might end up folding up so if it starts going too wonky stop the simulation undo the changes and try and go back to a previous state uh, but you are going to have to learn how to tame this beast because sometimes uh, the simulation can be really crazy okay so I'm actually going to extend the length of this bottom piece over here just a little bit now there is some stuff I am going to skip through and that is actually positioning the beanie on the head because that's also completely up to you guys how you want to style this mine's going to be over the ears and this is going to be up a little bit more and hanging down here or maybe you guys want it to be like that so let me do that now if you can I'd recommend you guys go to particle distance 5 and the only time I'll say going to particle distance 5 so early on with a piece of a garment like this is because this is really simple and uh, if your PC can handle it do it it's just I like to see a lot of the really awesome detail early on and I can do that with the beanie because it's simple so I'm going to select everything and put mine on 5 okay and I want to make sure that this part of the garment that's been folded up is actually sitting over the ear Now what I'm actually going to do here is uh, I feel like it's maybe a little bit too tight on our character so to loosen this up a little bit but you also have to be careful because it could fall off the character but to loosen this up just a little bit let me start pulling this down uh, I'm actually going to select all of this and widen it just a little bit so by decreasing the width over here you'll make it tighter by increasing it you're going to make it a little bit looser so keep that in mind and I want this so this back piece is going to come down here and I'm going to try and style this but also tame it because like I said sometimes this piece wants to fold over itself Okay, you can see I got that over the ear and I'm just going to keep on moving this until I'm happy uh, but before I do that another thing let me move that up a bit uh, this piece over here if you don't want this to f keep falling down like this the whole time you could move it up into an angle or position that you're happy with stop the simulation select that right click and go to solidify so solidif solidify is going to try and keep it in that position even uh, if you move the garment it'll try and keep it there or try its best to keep it there without that f uh, falling down okay so that solidify feature is pretty useful you can see over here still part of this garment goes a little bit crazy so just tame it guys be aware that uh, sometimes positioning and moving this stuff is going to be a little bit tricky but as long as you keep pulling it and pushing and pulling you'll be able to tame it and that's how I feel like marvelous design a lot of the times is just this animal this beast that really needs to be tamed so yeah I'm not going to record this entire process of me position this beanie on the head because I feel like it's unnecessary it's going to take way too long so style this however you want be aware that sometimes 
the simulation can get a bit wonky so just tame it okay let me actually just stop the recording here and move a little bit forward until I get something positioned correctly okay so another trick that's actually really useful that you guys can use if you're still having trouble with the ears is if you go to your character you'll see I have Genesis 3 female the skin offset by default is on 0 0.3 now I increase mine to 3 and basically what this is doing is it's offsetting this garment from the actual character so now I'm having less uh, intersection issues with the ear and it's just making my life a little bit easier so I'm still gonna go ahead and just shape this beanie until I'm 100% happy with it but you can see there it's really nice and especially on uh, particle distance 5 we can see that it's actually taking the shape of the ear over here as well and we're getting some folds on this region so it's nice to have this uh, sitting over the ear or if you're going for a particular type of beanie like this so you can see with that skin offset on 3 uh, we're having a lot less issues with the beanie uh, basically intersecting with the ear over there Okay, so let me continue shaping this beanie until I'm happy with it. Okay, so again guys, go with the back, maybe pull down certain areas like this and just shape it however you want. Okay. Another thing, if you didn't want this to be too tight on here, we could always uh, increase the width. Or we can select this bottom piece and nearby shrinkage weft. If I put this on a number higher than 100, it basically adds on more fabric onto this uh, particular piece and shrinkage warp uh, also kind of it adds more fabric and it increases its size a little bit so I'll put that on 110 if I click on simulate you can see over there it made some changes so you can play around with some of those values until you're happy with it so I do I do want some indication that yes it's uh, tight on the ear over here since we can still see uh, the actual shape of the ear on this piece but I don't want it to look too tight or else it ends up looking too much like a shower cap so again I'm going to just adjust the shape until I'm happy with it okay okay so I never really export thickness out of marvelous design I usually handle that in ZBrush with Z modeler but just to get a a more uh, accurate representation of how certain areas would look with thickness I actually do apply thickness in Marvelous Design as reference so I want this area to actually have some thickness applied so I'm going to select that go to add thickness and put that on 2 make sure that I'm on the thick textured surface and if I zoom in over here you can see that it's got some thickness applied to it so it's just a nice way to get an idea of how that will actually look now I'm actually not sure I like the fact that this is puffing out so much from this piece and that's because of the shrinkage weft so I actually might decrease this back to 110 you can see it puts a little bit tight over there and just looks a little bit better so if you had yours previously on 130 uh, like I told you to put it on maybe put on 110 and it will look a little bit better okay so you can see Bean is definitely taking shape now uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and save my project really important and in case the simulation goes crazy I want to jump back to a previous state okay so another thing that really pushes this this beanie forward is uh, the fact that we need to get some type of texture on here right so if you're going for a knitted beanie or a wool uh, wool knit beanie having that texture visible is going to actually make this look a lot more believable and we can bring that in as reference into marvelous design as well just to see how it would look uh, with different textures on it so to do that I'm gonna go to my default fabric I'm gonna click on these four dots and I just downloaded a wool knitted textured pattern from the internet a seamless pattern All right that's tileable and now over here by color I can maybe bring this over here and now I want to decrease the size of this wool knit pattern so we want to go to edit texture select the pattern drag this down and that's basically going to tile it and you can see automatically it just makes it look a little bit better I'm going to do the same for this bottom one bring in that wool knit pattern as well 
select that pattern and just de and just decrease the the tiling or the pattern. So you can see automatically by having a wool net pattern on there or something that better represents what this bean is made out of, uh, it just makes it look a little bit better. Obviously, I could push this beanie a lot further with ZBrush by using the Move Brush to adjust it and stuff as well. Uh, but there's still a lot we can do in here uh, to continue modifying this beanie. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so before we continue with the next step, again, guys, just save your project. It's always good to just have a saved state of your project in case you need to roll back or maybe you've done something and you just felt like what you saw previously looked a lot better. It's always good to save. Okay, so maybe you guys are going for uh, the beanies that you see in the video game The Division. So I'm actually going to just open up my folder again. So in The Division, you can see over here we've got this folded up, but this cap is a lot tighter on our character. So to do that, uh, all you'd have to do is you'd select this pattern and basically make it shorter. First of all, I'd want that to be shorter so that there isn't so much of this hanging off. And you'll see if I click on simulate, here we go. So by making that shorter, you get something that's a little bit more tighter on the character's head and takes the shape of it as well. So maybe that's a particular style of beanie uh, that you're going for. Okay. Let me undo those changes. If you go in for a classic uh, H3H3 beanie, uh, which is, uh, this is some artwork I saw on ArtStation by the way, that's basically poking up like this and that's quite a tall beanie. Uh, all you'd have to do is, you could either increase the length of this, But where this is really going to come into play is by actually selecting a different fabric. So you'll see I'll increase the length. It's going to also add more fabric on there. Okay. But by changing this fabric from wool gabardine to rib knit, sorry, not rib knit, a uh, rib knit is actually going to make it fall down a little bit more. Uh, by changing this to wool, uh, basically makes it stand up just a little bit more and then you just have to aid it over here so if you were maybe going for a beanie like this this is how we we'll do it and then I'd actually select that pattern and let's add on the shrinkage warp so I'm gonna add 120 on there and there we go that makes it even taller so you could literally create an epic H2H3 beanie. We could put that on something crazy like 150. And then <laughs> you've got this like ridiculously tall beanie. Uh, so maybe that's something you're going for. Maybe you want something that's completely ridiculous. You could do that. So that's just another style that you guys could go for. So I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to load in my other project, go back exactly from where I resumed before I made these changes. That's why I said it's good you save your project. So I'm going back to the current state that I was at. And now if you are going for a more droopy beanie, you'd obviously have to see how those beanies are actually placed on human heads. So you can see the back is really droopy over here. There's quite a lot of fabric and just the way it's positioned, you'll have to move that maneuver it in a way that it's hanging like this uh, but to create that excess fabric over here you would select this and maybe put this on something like 130 click simulate and it's just going to add more fabric over here and then you'd have to adjust and move this so that it actually falls with the gravity uh, but you can see this is still being a little bit too rigid so i would change my default fabric from wool gabardine to something like a rib knit. You can see that actually fell down a lot more. Something that just has more gravity applied to it. And then from here, it would just be a matter of you uh, adjusting the beanie until you're happy with it. So you can see, whoa, 
it's going a bit crazy over there if it's going a bit too crazy remember roll back those changes guys because you don't want it to fall off the head roll back the changes and then you can start again from here and increase that shrinkage width and just adjust it till, the, till it hangs a little bit better uh, but anyway I wanted just a classic uh, beanie like this I thought it looks really nice uh, there's still some more detail we can add on here okay so to make this really look like it's been folded like rolled and folded here at the top we're going to use an internal line on this bottom piece I'm going to put an internal line let me just click it just to reference see where, okay so I must put it here at the bottom just drag an internal line like that click enter go to my edit pattern select the line I can go into simulation and if I put mine on zero and increase the fold strength you can see that it actually starts like properly folding this like that uh, which makes it look a little bit more uh, believable maybe that's a bit too much and I can see that this piece is starting to roll up so I'm actually going to undo that and uh, I'm going to solidify this so that it stops moving and I can just adjust this over here until I get something I'm happy with it's just small details that make the beanie look a little bit more believable Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll continue. Let me see over there. Maybe, you know what I'm actually going to do? I think I still got 110. I'm bringing this all the way back to 100 so that it's sitting nice and flush against this beanie piece over here. Okay, but yeah, it's just. A lot of playing around some trial and error until you get something that you're happy with and then maybe if I wanted to let me just hide that I can select that and decrease fold rendering but we don't really see a harsh line over here but I'm just going to decrease that anyway and maybe in ZBrush I could use a smooth brush to round this off a little bit but you can see it kind of gave it like this, this edge with this lip over here on the beanie that looks pretty nice okay so I'm gonna go ahead save and we'll continue okay so at this point I could be considered finished with this uh, you can see I pulled it down a little bit more and extended the length there just a little bit uh, but if I wanted some more surface detail here I could maybe use ZBrush for that or maybe if I've got a material uh, that's got height I could use that as well on here and it could basically deform some of the geometry so maybe if I had a knit material with height on it I could apply that on here but another cool trick you can use in here if you want to add some more detail to your beanie if you go to your edit pattern select this line right click go to offset as internal line let's say number of offsets 40 and here by distance you'll have to play with this until you get the correct distance so let's say 11.8 11.9 11.9 looks fine that all looks like it's even spacing uh, so you see you can extend or you can even reverse the direction but we don't need to do that click on OK alright so this is to like create some ribbing over here and if I go to this you can see where all the lines are going to be placed alright so let's hide that show internal lines if I click on simulate increase my fold strength and increase the fold angle you'll see over there it can start creating like this ribbon effect on our beanie so maybe that's something you're going for and obviously the more lines you have uh, the more of these ribbon 
ribbon folds you'll have on your beanie as well. So that's something you can do. Uh, but I'm going to revert back to my previous beanie or maybe put more lines in here. We'll just leave it out entirely. But I just thought I'll just show you that quickly if you want to add more detail to the beanie. Okay. Okay, in some last minute details, you can start adding like a patch or logo onto your beanie as well. Like you'll see over here, some of these beanies have these nice little patches and these logos on them. It's really simple to do. So I'm going to put uh, my country's flag over here, the South African flag. I'm going to put it right over here. So I'm going to click blue dot to reference where that is and I'm going to use an internal rectangle and just draw that out over there okay so that's going to add it onto my design make sure that you've got internal line on and then let's see so I want this to be centered and now you could apply a logo as a texture but having an extra piece of geometry here is going to make it look believable because it's going to look like something's been sold on there it's going to stick out from this piece of the garment and just having that extra piece of geometry makes a world of a difference you'll see exactly what I mean okay so maybe over there that's where I want my logo to be now you guys can move this box wherever you want you can move it over there put your logo there it's up to you but once you are ready with your placement and you still got this selected, right click and say uh, clone as a pattern. So it's turning that line into a pattern. And there we go. This is going to be our extra geometry. I'm just going to move that there. I'm going to immediately put this on 5 already. And I want to put this on layer 2 so that it's on top of this layer. This is on layer 1. So make sure that's on layer 2 so there's no simulation or intersection issues. Uh, now let me see over here. You know what I'm going to do? Select both of these and let's increase the width a bit because I feel like that's just a bit too square. Can always adjust it. Okay, now let's sew. So I'm going to sew this onto this. And if your sewing is all tangled like that, you can just select that and say reverse sewing. But in this case, I'm actually going to, yeah, actually, <laughs> that's exactly what I should do. Reverse the sewing. It fixes it. Okay, so this one to this. Same issue here. So this here. Oops, that must go the other side. And this over here. Now again, you can see it's those tangles, so just reverse all the sewing if you're encountering the same issue. And there we go. Now if I click on simulate, oh, and another thing, the reason why it looks like that is because it doesn't have thickness. So put it on two. And there we go. And now maybe two might be too thick. Maybe put it on one. But having some thickness applied to it here, a marvelous designer, is gonna, you'll be able to view it correctly. And there we go. So we'd have our placement for our logo. And if we wanted to move it, I just select this and this. And I can move it wherever I want. Actually, I was supposed to go in the other direction. And then if you wanted to actually put your logo over there, to see what it would actually look like uh, all you have to do is go to graphic 2d pattern and I've got a whole folder here of just a bunch of different logos retro logos but I'm going for my South African flag click on that shape if this pops up just click on OK now go to uh, transform graphic select your graphic and decrease the size of your graphic over here. Now obviously I can adjust this however I want. But this will just give you an indication of how it would look if it was on that logo. Now of course you can just apply like in a 3D 
program just apply your texture onto the separate piece of geometry and it will be good to go alright guys so we are officially done we've got our beanie created over here uh, the only thing is different that I did uh, when I exported this out I actually didn't take this over to ZBrush this is just this exact same garment from MD and I exported it out I actually select the entire garment I went file export OBJ selected and I'll just say AAA and I, these were my settings I just said single object thick I unified UV coordinates in centimeters because I'm using a DAS model and that was my scale for the DAS model and then this was rendered in octane render and uh, you can see I'm still using that same wool knit a seamless pattern that I got from the internet but then I'm also using my own a texture set over here which is from my uh, textile patterns part 2 and I'm using the jackwad knit this material over here on the front just the increased scale and then uh, just to get some of this a uh, wool or weave pattern to pop out some more I actually created a bonus material over here in substance designer which had this knit pattern and I just applied some displacement with some height I applied the height map uh, just to get that to pop some more and you can see it, it base basically adds some a displacement to the actual geometry to make it look more believable and then in ZBrush I did add quickly some fiber mesh for some stray uh, fibers here on the beanie and that was basically it and then there's my South African flag so now you guys know how to create your own beanie feel free to send me your results and as always guys thank you so much for the support i truly appreciate it and stay tuned for some more tutorials all right goodbye